Hey everybody. To all of you, my colleagues and friends of the Partners of the Americas family, I wish you a wonderful and safe 2021 with the hope to connect again in person soon. You know, this past year, if it has taught us one thing, it's that together we can do extraordinary things. Last year, many of our programs and services were halted you know, when the coronavirus first reached each of our communities. Yet, we were able to adapt our work and accomplish so much because of your resilience, your creativity, you know, and perhaps most importantly, your passion for the mission of Partners of the Americas. So thanks to each one of you for your dedication and your sacrifices made this past year. And you know, I think it's important for us to take a moment to remember, and probably even more important to not forget those who were the most impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, also the continuing social injustices and the political divisiveness in so many of our countries. All of this has sadly taken its toll and played a leading role in the losses and even the breaking apart of families, friends, and communities. And in light of the racial and social injustices that we witnessed during 2020, Partners of the Americas established a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee you know, to guide the organization towards a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive culture and work environment. During 2021, the DEI committee will continue to review the organization's policies and activities, and it's currently developing a DEI action plan to serve as a roadmap over the next several years to realize and maintain this goal. So please check on our website soon for our organizational DEI statement. You know, 2021, I think it's gonna be a really important year for partners. We now have the strongest board of directors since at least I joined the organization back in 2017. And this is due in no small part to so many of the current and past board members' hard work and support during these past four years. And in addition, we have successfully brought in multiple new programs, resulting in the immediate doubling of our budget in 2021, with we expect to have also more increases for 2022 and beyond. And this is very exciting for us. It in turn means that we are bringing in more staff, both here in our international office, as well as throughout the entire hemisphere to support the implementation of these new programs. It also means that we will be able to invest in our infrastructure, our tools, and our services for our chapters and programs. So what does this really mean in the immediate future for 2021? Our membership unit will continue to increase and grow engagement with our 87 chapters, more than 380 chapter leaders, and thousands of members through online communities of practice by region and area, areas of interest, and through strengthening all of our chapters by focusing on providing capacity building tools and resources. We'll be almost doubling our capacity to be able to support all of you out in the chapters and the countries where the real work of achieving our mission gets done. You know, there's so much that our chapters do and it is just not possible for us to be able to reflect that here, which is why we're focusing in on our IT platforms. These will allow the more active chapters to share your successes and lessons learned and the rest of the chapters to learn and grow. We do all of this keeping our focus on connecting, serving, and changing lives. In addition to our chapters, our three technical units 
are doing some pretty incredible work right now, and they will, of course, be increasing their impact significantly in 2021 and beyond. For example, our Education and Global Citizenship Unit received an additional $3 million for the next year alone, where we have launched two 100,000 strong in the America's Innovation Fund grant competitions with grant funding awarded to 37 higher education institutions. The unit will also continue to support public diplomacy and community resilience projects worldwide during, in particular, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, for the Citizen Diplomacy Action Fund for U.S. alumni. And going into 2021, these grants will enable the alumni to build resilient communities, foster alumni network development, and promote media literacy education worldwide. These efforts will impact individuals, communities, and organizations in Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Guatemala, Mexico, Peru, the United States, and indeed through our chapters all throughout the hemisphere. Our Economic Development and Health Unit recently received three new awards totaling $43 million over the next five years, averaging about $8.6 million per year. And this with USDA and USAID. They'll start a program to work with Colombian cacao farmers to diversify their cropping systems and increase their resilience to environmental and economic shocks. And through our Farmer to Farmer program, the unit will continue to recruit remote volunteers to conduct virtual agricultural assistance assignments until it is safe for the volunteers to travel, of course. And this will occur in Burma, Colombia, the Dominican Republic, Guatemala, Guyana, and Jamaica, as well as supporting partner organizations in Burkina Faso, Cambodia, Morocco, the Philippines, and Trinidad and Tobago. And we're also excited to continue our efforts for another couple years to improve nutrition through fortification of staple foods in Haiti. Our Child Protection Unit received three new awards totaling over $57 million over the next five years with USAID and US Department of Labor, averaging about $11.4 million per year. And these programs will strengthen awareness of Mexico's labor justice reform and strengthen Mexico's ca capacity to identify, prevent, and mitigate the impacts of the 2026 FIFA World Cup on the realization of labor rights and human rights guarantees. And thirdly, we will advance Colombia's compliance of labor rights laws in the port sector. We're also very excited because we're beginning our largest program ever in Partners of the Americas. And this is focused on increasing the capacity of the Colombian education system to provide sustainable and inclusive quality education in areas impacted by migration. And of course, we also expect to continue the great work that we're doing to eradicate child labor and reduce trafficking across multiple country programs in Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Paraguay, and Peru. Now these accomplishments are a testament to the dedication and the motivation of all of our volunteers, members, and staff. Our network and initiatives only continue to grow and we look forward to seeing how much more hope and understanding we can spread and partnerships we can build in the future together. You know, we are so excited to keep this momentum going in 2021 while, of course, also keeping our communities safe and healthy. I personally am very anxious and ready to travel out to our chapters and projects as soon as humanly possible. And I so much look forward to seeing as many of you as I can to learn and share the amazing work that you do, changing lives in so many ways. I believe this is going to be our best year yet for Partners of the Americas and invite you to join us in this. In partnership, we serve.